What's up guys, welcome back to another photo review video. Today I'm gonna to take 20 of your images that you so kindly sent to this email that's here in the description, wallacephotography at gmail.com. And I'm gonna do a review with the stock photography in mind. I'm gonna be analyzing these images in a very technical way just to help you get better at stock photography and generate more sales. So let's start with the first one here. It looks like a sunset over a lake, a reflection. And the first thing I see is that the lake is a little bit crooked. The horizon is not level. That's something that, I mean, it might be level, it might, that just might be the shoreline, but it looks better when water looks flat. And let's bring back some of this sky. I don't have the raw image, so I can't really do this uh, justice. L and Lightroom dims the lights. Uh, it took me a long time to figure that out. So by hitting L1, you get half the screen and then one more time that makes it completely dark so your image pops. In develop mode, when you hit the letter Y in Lightroom, it goes to before and after. So you can see I just did a little, a uh, couple of tweaks. I just brought the highlights down, had a little bit more contrast and I reduced the blue and darkened the blue. And now to me, that image just pops a little bit more. It's not as distracting with the blue. That might be smoke in the atmosphere or something, but it is very prevalent. There's a filter here where the sky is and that's a little bit too it, it just doesn't go there. It looks like it's too bright or too dark based on what it what it should be. This image would be accepted. It looks fine technically. Uh, just drop the blues here and take care of that. Uh, I just don't know if it would sell. There's a lot of images like this. This doesn't have a concept. It's a beautiful sunset. It's a great uh, scene, but I just don't see a concept to to make it sellable. One more thing that I noticed with this image, and this is because I have the same camera and I know that all the focal points are right here in the middle. So we tend to focus in the middle and you can see, you can see the mountains and everything is right here. The reflection is right in the middle. If we drop the camera a little bit, you get a much stronger composition. Uh, if I would have kept the wide angle, you would see more of the clouds here in the water and it would just look a little bit better than right in the middle. But anyway, let's go to the next image. And wow, that's pretty cool. This is with an Olympus uh, EM10 Mark IV with a 14 to 42. So that's a fairly wide angle lens. Uh, what were the settings? So I've got a 3.5 ISO 250. Those are great settings. Uh, at one sixth of a second. So it's very, very dark. Sunrise or sunset. Mountain climbing, the image looks fairly sharp. Uh, I love the image. Lots of negative space. It gives size, it gives dimension, it gives uh, uh, location too. It's a great stock image. I like the flashlight in the, for in the head. That looks great. By the way, this blue stuff here, that's Lightroom telling me there's no information. Uh, the letter J uh, activates it. And if it was on the highlights and the whites, it would look red like there if I up the exposure. So the letter J lets me know whether there's information missing or not. Usually for stock, you don't want too much missing. Then you could bring up a little bit. Uh, it's not very noisy, so that's great. But yeah, this image looks uh, really, really cool. Let me reset it back to original. Uh, there's a little bit of technical issues here in the sky with banding. I don't know if that's at the time of processing or that's just how the camera captured it. Uh, opening it up a little bit, you can see a little bit more detail in the rock just by bringing those shadows up. Not too much because it doesn't look natural, but a little bit of that and some uh, noise reduction would really help the image. Very small, very light tweaks. Let me go before and after. It's almost not noticeable, but here in the shadows, they're just a little bit more light. And to me, that would help. I'm jealous, I don't know where that is. It looks really cool. But anyway, let's move on to the following image. Yeah, that looks like Secret Beach. That's a beautiful image. Uh, I love this part in Oregon with the sea stacks and everything just looks awesome. Uh, there are some technical issues here with this camera and I have, if I gotta say, it's a, it's probably a camera phone. Uh, let's see, that's uh, J information. The I in Lightroom gives you information and this is a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 with the rear camera. Nine mega, megapixels, that's uh, plenty, but you can see a little bit of distortion here in the corners. Uh, the grass here is pretty soft and there's it's a little bit over sharpened. Phones tend to sharpen images a lot. It's a great composition, great lines. Everything looks beautiful. The trail leading to the beach, maybe if you would have stepped here a little bit more, a little bit more to the left. So the trail, you could see the whole trail instead of cutting it here with the grass. There's not much I can do that's not gonna get accepted because it's a phone picture and it has some technical issues. The center is sharp, it's bright, it's good. 
but the phone limitation is not going to get this image accepted. So next. So this is from the same beach, I believe, at next viewpoint. You're hiking down to the beach and this viewpoint looks, uh, it, it's incredible. But again, technical limitations. You can see the tree here is very soft. The grass isn't and then the beach is. Just one more thing where cell phones just don't excel. This uh, rock here in the back, this uh, peninsula here in the background, you can see that it's soft, but yet on this side it's not. And those are technical issues. It's not gonna get accepted. Great composition, great eye from the photographer, but the image uh, quality is not there. And that's because it's a cell phone image. So next. All right, this next image I have here, this looks like a, a walk bridge over uh, the coast somewhere. There are people walking, so I don't know. Uh, you can recognize the person. I gotta zoom in a lot, but you can see that there's a person with a stroller. So you would have to sell that as editorial or remove the person. There's a little bit of information missing here if I hit the letter J in Lightroom and lets me know that that's blown out. But it is fine. It's a very wide picture. I thought it was a cell phone image, but it's not. It's from a Canon N50. Uh, it's a, a good picture, well composed. Uh, I would add a little bit of contrast just to bring more detail onto the bridge. And then maybe a crop. These trees here distract a little bit. If I bring it in a little bit like that and then on this side there's not much. Uh, to me that makes it a, a stronger composition. Bring it in. There's no reason why it wouldn't get accepted as an editorial because other people and there seems to be some artwork here in that house. I just don't see a concept. It's very well done, very well composed. For stock photography, I just don't see a reason how, how somebody would use it, but try it. I've had images that I never think are gonna sell and are my best sellers. And then the ones that I think are gonna be my best sellers and I haven't sold them once. Let me see what kind of camera it was. Uh, Canon M50 again, very well done. It looks like somewhere in California, there's tunnels, there's mountains. Uh, the one thing I noticed first is that it's very yellow, very uh, orange. Uh, and this is something you gotta be careful. White balance is one of the reasons why most images don't sell. If they look like they need work, people are not going to buy them. But that's been my experience anyway. So I'm gonna change the white balance here. I'm gonna drop it. Uh, that makes it more of a neutral. It's a little blue, so I'm gonna even bring that, uh, the tint a little bit more to the green side. And I'm gonna bring the, down some of the highlights and brighten up the shadows. Uh, to me, that looks a lot better already. Very well composed. You have these lines here, that would do great. Uh, if I compare it to before and after, here's the letter Y. You can see the difference in just the white balance. Just a, a small tweaks will make that image pop and generate more sales. Uh, when an editor buys a picture, they don't wanna do any work to it. They wanna just take it and use it. If you have to import it, change it, and then use it, it's most people are not gonna buy it. So try to get the white balance on camera as best as possible. Another coastal image, somebody lives by the coast. These are really pretty. Let me check here. It's very soft here in the corners. I, I'm gonna say this is that cell phone again. <laughs> yep. It's very soft here in the white angles. And that those are some technical issues that are gonna get this image not accepted. It's beautiful, it's really cool, but yes, again, it is a Samsung Galaxy Note 20. One way to overcome this, because if I look at the image, it's always on the corners. It's, the middle of the image seems fine. So if I crop it, I'm just gonna remove this here. I'm just gonna crop the, the soft areas out. Uh, I know I'm losing a lot of the image. No, it's still not gonna work. Uh, maybe get an iPhone or something. No, <laughs> this phone is just not gonna do it. It has way too many technical issues. I don't know if it's uh, something on the lens itself or it's on the, the phone itself, but there's something here that's not getting images clear. Every corner, everything here is very soft and if I crop it, I would just ruin the composition. This side is the same thing. It's just very soft and the middle here is very sharp. So sadly, this is not gonna get accepted. It's a great image. Again, great composition. Uh, whoever's taking these pictures is, is doing a great job with the composing. Uh, I just, technically, it's not gonna get accepted. So let's move on to the next one. All right, the next photo, uh, that looks small. That's what is it? Sony ZV-E10. This, I believe, it's another one that's one of those that's set for um, thumbnails. 
but it is it's it's very small and there's no detail you know when you're taking pictures of a of something your subject here i'm assuming was a waterfall so try to get in front of the tree so that things are not blocking your subject unless they're going to be used to to frame it this is just kind of blocking it and making it distracting that's not going to get accepted not only for the size and composition but it just um it just doesn't have the visual appeal. So this is not gonna sell. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, okay, this one looks kind of weird. It's in and out of focus. That's not gonna get accepted. That looks to me like it's a cell phone. It's another Samsung Galaxy 20 uh, something, but it, it's, it's not a good image. It's technically, there's nothing in focus. It goes in and out. And that's not gonna get accepted, that's not gonna do it. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, this next one, again, very well composed. It looks beautiful. Uh, the lake, the trees, the shadow, even though there's shadow here, there's information. Uh, it looks small, so I'm gonna say it's a Sony ZV-E10 uh, lights here. Yes, it is that. So it's very small. This file is not gonna get accepted. But compositionally, it looks great. If you had a, a larger file, a bigger format of this, uh, I think it would do great. Again, adding a person here or somebody standing there will give you more sellability. But as it is, the photo is fine. It looks sharp enough. The only issue is the dimensions, and that's because that's uh, 0 0.9 megapixels uh, from the little Sony. So let's move on to the following. This one looks like it's a race. There's a timer. There's people here getting ready to start or stop. Uh, good concept. I'm assuming you cut the faces off so you didn't have to use a, a mono release. You probably wouldn't anyway. Uh, I'll maybe bring, bring the crop down a little bit. I don't like to see people's heads cut halfway up. Uh, we could bring the crop down just slightly. Maybe here. Now that you still get the same idea, you got that centered, uh, but no, to me it looks like a, a good image. It looks sharp here at the focus. A Canon 250D with a 50 millimeter, that's a great lens, uh, shot at f3.5. So I could see this selling, it has a lot of potential. If anything, I would add a little bit of contrast to make it pop and bring the white balance back to neutral. If you look at the before and after with the Y, and I'm gonna dim the lights. You can just see a little bit of just the color, how it brings it down. Uh, and the contrast makes it pop. It makes the numbers here come to life a little bit more. I don't see anything technically wrong with the image. I just wanted to crop it in so I wasn't cutting their heads off uh, and just bring the temperature down a little bit to make it a little bit easier to find and uh, sell. Uh, let's move on to the following image. All right, so this next one is a whole bunch of batteries uh, lined up. There are some logos, I believe. There's a lot of writing, so those would be recognizable and there's logos. So that would have to be editorial. The image looks fine. I would add more contrast just to make him pop a little bit more. I'll bring the blacks down. I don't want to lose the shadows. Uh, before and after, to me, that one pops just a little bit more. And the white background, there's not much we could do. I could try to drop the exposure here in Lightroom. I just don't like that that line there is very distracting. I would like to see more of that gray in the background instead of that white band there, but I, there's not much I can do now. When you're photographing, just tilt the camera up a little bit, uh, lift the camera and shoot down, and that will give you more of that background. And it would make it more sellable because it's only one color. The more the more lines and colors you introduce in the background, the more difficult it's gonna to be to be able to use that image. So by keeping it all gray or that dark background, that, that will make it better. And that's pretty much the only, uh, the only thing I can say with this image. So let's go back to the following one. All right, this next image, it looks uh, like an HDR maybe. The colors are a little bit bright. The, uh, the sky was recovered nicely. It just, uh, it would sell, it looks a little cartoonish, um, and that's because most HDR do that, does that. There is, it's a very small file, so it looks very grainy and very soft. It's been overly processed, and I don't know that it's gonna get accepted. Uh, let me go here to, it's, it's 0.3 megapixels. It's not gonna get accepted, it's very small. 
the vignetting is gonna and they're gonna think that's an issue you don't want to get artistic and blow up your images and try to do as much as you can less is more when it comes to stock you want to keep your images simple anybody can add this but removing it is very difficult um, because it's a small file and that might have been just to get me the email I can't really do much it was very well done uh, let me go to reset here uh, it just it's a little bit over the top for stock photography keeping it simple the sky looks fine it's a little bit too warm for me uh, I, like I said I'm just gonna drop that and bring some of the highlights up maybe brighten it up a little bit just so it looks more neutral but like I said this one's not gonna get accepted because of the vignette it's a little bit over overdone and stock agencies don't like that they used to a few years ago now we're going back to natural look composition is great the lines everything is very well done it's just the processing was a little bit over the top so if you want to sell more try to dial that back a little bit um, so let's move on to the next one this next one that uh, product picture does usually sell a lot that that could be an editorial yeah it has to be editorial because you got the logos and the names uh, but again look at the background it looks yellow if we drop here the the uh, white balance it already looks a little bit better there's multiple light sources that which is why this is yellow and that is blue in the back uh, the shadow a little bit of contrast will help but remember Lightroom has what's called background select so you can completely isolate the background and bring it back up that looks a little bit better than the original you know just with a couple of clicks again it's a product that would have to be editorial and unless it's a product that a lot of people are using or needing it might not sell but for product picture it's great I would just take something without labels without logos so the other thing I noticed with this picture is that it missed focus it focused here on top and not on the name if you're gonna do a product shoot remember to focus on the name of that product um, I don't it's not gonna get accepted because it missed focus and that's gonna be the reason they're gonna give you but even if it got accepted I don't know that it has that sales potential because of how specific of the product it is I could be wrong I've sold some specific products. The fact that it missed focus is going to make this one harder to sell, but it's great job on the product shoot. Uh, just remember the focus and to clean up the background as much as possible. The next image. Uh, the next one, there's some tropical flowers that look very pretty. I've sold images like this in the past, so I don't see why this one wouldn't sell. There's some information missing in the shadows, which is fine because it's in the dark areas that's that's not it doesn't have to be bright a little bit of contrast will make those petals and those flowers pop just a little bit more and uh, the composition see you're focused right in the middle if I go to the crop area here I could crop it maybe there so that you have some leading lines now you have these flower here that curve there's gonna help a lot and then you have negative space here for text so welcome to the tropics or anything uh, as far as the settings everything looks fine 125th of a second ISO 100 at 50 millimeter it's not focused it looks like there might have been some wind that's got a little bit of motion blur so it's not going to get accepted I've sold quite a few images of tropical flowers like this so just keep trying uh, keep in you know just keep in mind the uh, the composition leading lines help a lot and having this curb here from that flower that flower and that flower and then the negative space here will make a great stock image but just remember to keep an eye on your composition and uh, your shutter speed for motion blur all right the next one here looks like a, a dentist office uh, it's great lighting the models it, it, it looks fine uh, the back looks a little bit yellow that might be just a white balance sometimes using different lightings diff indoor portraits are very difficult having the models here that that looks great uh, yeah it's very well done I don't see anything technically wrong with the image maybe a little bit of a crop here would help just because that's a little distracting in the back uh, keeping the background as simple as possible is is crucial it's very difficult when you're in an office in a small room like this there's just way too much going on using an f2 is going to blur as much as that as uh, as you can 
but technically the image is fine. The focus is sharp. I can see the her eyes, her face is very sharp. Uh, and then the F2 gives you the concept that's blown out in the back. If she was turned this way and both of them were leading, your eyes are engaging with both of the models, that would be a little bit of a stronger composition, but this one should be fine. It should generate some sales. Uh, and yeah, it's a good image. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so now we got an old camera, an Argus camera. This is a rangefinder camera. Again, the background looks a little yellow. Remember the white, white balance, bringing that down some, adding some contrast. I'll bring out some of the shadow just to get the texture here on the camera itself and select the background with Lightroom. Now I can bring up the, the background and I can go all the way to completely isolated. If I hit J, it tells me where there's information and when there's not. So the background is completely blown out and now the camera uh, is missing some information here in the corners. As you can see, there's no detail there, but to me that looks a lot better. I don't know that it will get accepted for stock. It is a product, they have to be editorial. Uh, you might sell it, it's just very specific. I've done things like this in the past and I don't sell any. I try to get objects that to me look unique, look really cool, and I haven't had any success. Things that are so unique uh, is very difficult to find a unique buyer <laughs> to, to use those images. Um, when you're doing products, more popular things tend to help. But if you're doing product photography for somebody else, I'm sure they would be very happy with that image. Like I said, all I did was change the white balance and then brighten up the background so your product stands out even more. So that, that would be a great product shoot. I just don't know that it would do that great for stock. All right, this next one looks like a nighttime image. This looks great, but it's green. <laughs> I don't know why the, the light is green. It could have been the light here. Uh, there's a, an effect here. If you're trying to get nighttime or, or images like this, let me see if I can fix the white balance. Uh, by bringing that down, that makes it a little bit more neutral. You can see the sky. It's 30 second exposure, ISO 125. Uh, the white balance, it just, it's not, it's off. I don't see that this would sell. If you're trying to get some more nighttime pictures, I've sold quite a few of my nighttime images, but you need a, like a, a famous location and shoot at the blue hour, just after the sun sets. You get the blue sky, you can see the sky, and then you can get a clear shot of whatever you're shooting. This doesn't really have a, a concept or, or a, a subject. Uh, it's just the light in a tree at night. I've sold this one many times. Uh, I used a high aperture or F16 so you can get that twinkle in the, in the lights. And because it was in Peru and it was a famous church, it's, it's sold many times. You need a concept and also when you're doing nighttime pictures, unless you're trying to shoot stars, you need to go at that blue hour and you only have literally like 30 minutes. After that, it's completely dark. All right, so the next image, I got a person with sunglasses and headphones. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this image. Uh, there's not really a strong concept. I know there's no logos, which is great. Everything was removed, even from the headphones. I don't see any logos. I don't see anything obvious. Uh, the shadow is a little bit harsh. If you're going to be shooting a model or shooting someone, Use a light modifier. I, I showed that in a previous video how different images look when you're blocking the light with a diffuser. And that would give you a much stronger image, much easier to sell. I've sold that selfie of me uh, a few times already because I had the light modifier. This one, I just don't know what the concept is. I see just a, a person walking down the street with headphones on his neck. Sorry, I touched my microphone. If you're trying to make a, an image to sell the headphones that should be on his ears. If you're looking for the, the shades for the sunglasses, then that, that's a better idea. But then this would be distracting. There's too many elements that are competing against each other. The image is fine. Technically, it is sharp. Uh, it's in focus. A Nikon D5300. Technically, the image is very well done. I just don't see a concept. Like I said, there's too many competing elements. You got a hat, glasses, and the headphones. If the headphones were in his ear, now we're, we're 
thinking about selling the headphones or using that as a product or using that as a, as a subject, but just a person with those elements, I just don't know that it will sell. Yeah, I would try it anyway. You got, you know, why not? It's a clear, it's a sharp, and it's a very well done image. But as far as concepts, I'm just not seeing it. All right, this next image, it looks like a beautiful mountain. I would say it's in the Northwest, but I'm not familiar with this one. The trees are framing it. It looks, it looks beautiful. It's a, a sunset or sunrise because it, light is very soft from the side there is a lot of missing data here in the image so i don't know that that's gonna help uh let me uh let me see some information here 3.1 megapixel that is way too small it's not gonna get accepted i don't have any data on the camera i don't know what it what was used uh bringing up the shadows will help that'll give you more detail on the trees and then i would do a crop i know i like negative space and stock photography likes negative space but your main subject is too small and in the background. So by bringing it in, it'll, it'll just make it look a little bit better. Like I said, this image is not gonna get accepted because it's too small, but that to me looks a little bit better than your previous image, just because of the crop uh, and, the sh and bringing up the shadow just a little bit to see some detail in the trees. It's, it's a great idea, great concept. Technically, the image is not gonna get accepted because you're you're, uh, it, it's too small, it's way too small of a file. But the images, I like it, I like the mountain, I like the light, I like the trees framing it. There's just some technical issues that, that could be improved, uh, maybe with the longer lens. Like I said, I just don't have the information in this file. All, I, all it says is it's a 3.1 megapixel image, which is again, not enough. And I believe this is the last image guys, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in stock photography, I have a whole playlist here with a lot of videos that might help you uh, learn and understand more what's the game of stock. So thanks again, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.